It's about that time of day again, folks. Welcome back to Nightly Newsletter, boys and girls. Joseph James here. Back after Labor Day weekend, Tuesday evening, September 8th, 2015. I hope you're ready. We go into the best price action of the year, the next five months, guys, until we run into the end of March. We have some of the best trading opportunities you're going to see all year round. Now, got some major news tomorrow. Got a bunch of trading ranges to work with. The name of the game this week is going to be rotation. I can't wait to jump in and show you what our plan is for the gold, euro, crude, and, of course, the S&P 500. Before we jump into it, though, I do want to remind you, though, please make sure you're watching this video on our trading blog here at Sideways Markets. If you're watching the video on our YouTube page right now, there's a link in the description of the video that will take you over here to our trading blog. First of all, a few reasons here. First, if you're not a member of School of Trade and you'd like a free pass, come out and join us in our live trade room as a guest. You can grab a free pass upper left-hand corner. Also, I'll invite you to join our nightly newsletter mailing list on the lower left-hand corner. All I need is your name and your email address, and I'll shoot you an email every evening when this newsletter is ready to go. Right below the video, you can download all the charts. Yeah, how about that? All the charts you'll see in tonight's video, you can download those right below the video tonight. And then over on the right-hand side, you'll see a spot to register as a trial member of School of Trade, right? You'll learn more with me in one week than you will anywhere else on the interwebs. Read member reviews, get membership information, and don't forget, we've always got someone standing by 24-7 to help you guys out with whatever questions you may have. Remember, here at School of Trade, we focus on helping new traders launch a career in the financial markets. We'll talk more about that in just a moment. I don't want to delay, though. we got a lot to cover here. Long weekend, holiday weekend. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Let's kick this sucker off here with the crude oil futures. The CL1015 here on the 7500 volume chart, our anchor chart here on crude. Balance, balance, and balance. As you can see here, the volume profile on the left combined with the trading range you can see on the chart. We are smack right in the middle of this range and relatively balanced after coming off of a very, very nice rotation from the high back down to that low. Now, you'll notice the buyers missed the highs a little bit. Sellers undershot the lows. That's given us a bit of a price wedge. And this really just kind of reaffirms our balanced position here right now on the black gold. Uh, we don't have rollover for at least another week and a half. So we'll be trading this We'll be trading this 1015 contract here until about the 18th, 19th of September, right? So we're looking at quad witching week, third week of September coming up here. Also the week they're supposed to be talking about liftoff from the Fed. So what's our plan here on crude? Rotation, rotation. Crude oil is bullish this evening after the buyers begin rotating this price from the lows of the range down around that 44 right on the way up to the highs of the range up around 49 so we can see the major range and this range shouldn't be anything new last time we saw each other we were selling this sucker all the way down to that low of the range and now of course we're looking for it to rotate back higher so we can see a bull channel which we'll use for the best buying opportunities on the way higher keeping an eye on a target back near the highs of this range. So right now we are in rotation mode right now, coming off that low, and the objective is to get back up to these highs. That's the objective. We're going to have some resistance areas overhead, which we will be looking for as profit targets. I'm looking at you, $48 a barrel. So we definitely have a rotational target back up towards the highs of the range. If you really want to get a little bit perky here, you can draw the measured move. And that puts us right around that 49 half, possibly back to $50 a barrel. Okay, so we know we do have potential here to go up. I would say off the top of my head, though, kind of the, kind of the edge of this volume profile up top here edge of that price wedge we're looking around 48 maybe as high as 49 49 half here towards the end of the week here we'll have to see how these bulls do let's take a look though at some of the key components on this chart as well lower left hand corner right sellers miss the low that definitely tells us now see when the markets miss a higher low it's usually one of two things going to happen next Either it's going to reverse like a slingshot and go back in the opposite direction, or another little bit of it is, is there some unfinished business down at those lows, right? So we do want to keep that in mind. We do expect the second thing here to have some range rotation, right? Range rotation meaning... 
going from those lows up to the highs. So we're definitely planning on this market eventually making it up towards those highs. So buyers, we want to be on red alert. We also see channel rotation. And the channel rotation I'm talking about is this short-term channel. And we were playing this channel today in the trade room. It was, a, it was a great environment today. We found ourselves, had to wait a little bit through that pullback off the highs, but then we got the easy money back up. And of course, before we finished the morning session, we gave guidance to all the students in the trade room to wait for that rotation to buy it again. And so now you can see here, we rotated off that low and now we are cruising back towards the highs of this channel. So not only do we have rotation off the range low, but we also have rotation off the channel low. Now, let's talk about the different scenarios. If this channel happens to fail, we have that 4463, 44 area. Because you can see here, I'm not ready to call this an undershoot just yet because it is kind of the middle of the night here as far as crude purposes go. So we are going to be watching here for that channel rotation. We should see the rotation up to these highs. If we don't see the rotation up to these highs, these sellers are going to try to finish that unfinished business that was left down here towards the 44. So be aware, if we don't finish that rotation, be on the lookout for the sellers to run this thing down and that will be another buying opportunity down at those lows. Okay, remember the rotation off that range low. So that means we are definitely short-term bullish, long-term sideways, which means as soon as we get back up to these highs, we'll be then looking for the rotation back down to those lows. Now, one last thing about crude oil. With a Monday holiday, we do not have the API number on, uh, on Tuesdays at 4.30, and we don't have the DOE scheduled for Wednesday at 10.30 a.m. That means tomorrow is a full day of school, kids, right? So we know half day tomorrow for trading crude. As you guys know, on Wednesdays, typically, as long as Monday that week is not a holiday, but on Wednesdays, though, we know 10.30 a.m. is typically going to be a no trade time for us with a trade around it. Tomorrow is not going to be that day. So double check your economic calendar. All the calendars should be correctly updated. Sometimes those free calendars online, they don't update them uh, the way they really should. So make sure you double check that. So right now, we're looking for buying opportunities here on crude oil. The hard part right now is, is if we go higher here, and finish the rotation, the best buying opportunities will come back down at those lows. If we collapse back down now, we're going to wait for the sellers to try twice. Once they fail, then we'll get the next round of buying opportunities. But our expectations right now is to see this market rotate from the lows all the way back up to those highs. Remember, tomorrow morning in our live trade room, we'll be trading this market on a much short-term time frame, looking for the short-term opportunities to get involved with this. This, of course, being the anchor chart giving us the big picture. Okay, so definitely look for, as that price goes lower, we'll definitely be looking for opportunities here to be a buyer down here tomorrow. If price does go higher, if you're a student of mine, and we talked about buying that low earlier today, you want to look for your profit target up around that 47, and then wait for that rotation for the next buying opportunity as we keep chugging our way higher here. Shall we keep going? Crude oil looks like we're ready to go here. Now, you're going to see a lot of these rotations. You're going to see a lot of rotations. Now, the S&P 500 has broken free of that correlation to crude oil we were watching last week. If you recall from last week, we had a, a very kind of funky correlation between the S&P and, and crude oil. It doesn't usually happen like that, but we did have it last week. Now, we've certainly broken free of that. Maybe this S&P will be a leading indicator for us here right now. But we can definitely see, though, the S&P has completed the rotation almost, right? We had a little bit more work to be done to complete the rotation all the way back up to that range high. But this is kind of what you'd expect to see out of crude oil later on this week. Taking a look at the S&P 500, we do have rollover alert on the S&P, so be aware of that. The E-mini S&P is rotating nicely from the range lows all the way up to the range highs with the completion of the rotation we will be looking for buyers to fail at the highs for selling opportunities back down to the lows. 
this is what we call a trap, right? This is, this is where you start looking for traps up here. This is where sellers get a little bit too aggressive. They get a little bit too greedy. They get trapped out just before they make that run. And then we see the push back down. So knowing that we are expecting rotation, highs down to lows, back up to highs, back down to lows. This is where we have to play careful. We can definitely see, once again, very similar to crude oil. Remember we were talking about this earlier. Crude and the S&P were very, very similar last week. So we had these kind of undershoots of those range highs on both sides for crude. We only got one of them on the S&P. So right now, we are almost in the completion zone for that, for that rotation. We're not quite there yet, though. We're not quite there yet. Now, take a look at some of the key components here you're seeing right now. The reason why I keep saying we're not quite there yet is because of the first component we see here, which is that spike in channel. The spike in channel pattern started off right out the gate just after 6 p.m. on Sunday. Remember, that's when this market opens for the week. And then we have the spike up. Now, of course, I know you guys follow my newsletter, and I know last week, you became an expert on spike in channels. We know that there is a three-part process, right, to this spike in channel. There's a spike up, there's a lazy channel, and then there's the correction before we make that move. So what I would be looking for here is if you want to sell these highs, if you want to sell these highs, is we need to see buyer failure. We're not going to be able to get a lot of real confidence out of a selling pattern right now. We need a little bit better than that because of this spike in channel. Where do you think that spike in channel would fail to? I've got the beginning of the channel down around 1930.86. So this has potential to really go lower and still give us a chance to snap back up to those highs. Let's keep going. The range rotation. This is another important part of this of this chart today that range rotation off from that low up to that high we know there is definitely still room for this price to go higher here we want to be open-minded to that especially because of that spike in channel remember spike in channel says strength spike in channel says strength so that furthermore tells me the best opportunities here to be a seller off this high right now is going to be waiting for the buyers to fail Next up, channel rotation. We've got the range rotation going from the low up to that high. We have reason to believe we're getting a little bit more gas left in the tank. But now we have the channel rotation. And I think this is going to be the biggest clue we're going to get here for the S&P this week. First thing is, we know we've got the rotation from the low up to the high, back down to the low. And then where should we be going next? We should be going back up to that high, right? We should be rotating back up to that high. If we do get up to that high, now we are all the way at the high of the range. We've completed the rotation, and then we'll look a whole lot better looking for buyers to try twice and fail and sell the high. So we're keeping an eye on channel rotation. What that means is, is that if we see this price continue going higher, we know right off the bat, buyer failure, and sell the highs. The big clue, though, is going to come if we don't complete that rotation. If we trail off here, now that leads me down into the next clues. The range rotation, the channel rotation tells us, most importantly, I think that channel rotation tells us price wedge at the high, price wedge at the low, we know what the goal is here, right? We know the goal if these buyers are going to fail. They're going to head back down to lows of that price wedge. Remember, I need proof, though. Where would the proof be? In comes the gap. Look closely at these candlesticks right now, and you'll see multiple gaps. What's very interesting is, is that that gap happens to be right on top of the 50% range. What does that tell me? That tells me now these gaps are just begging to be retested. I'm going to be looking for the buyers to try twice and fail. 
I don't have the confidence in a seller pattern going lower because we're in this area where we're right for traps. Sellers trying too aggressively to sell the highs of this wedge. And with that spike in channel, we know we have to be patient for a correction. So I'm looking for the buyers now without rotating back to those highs. Remember, if we rotate up to those highs in the overnight session, we come back in tomorrow, we've already rotated, this becomes a whole lot easier to get short. If I want to get short right now, though, I really need to wait for proof. And what that proof's going to come is, is seeing these buyers try once, try twice, and then sell it. The target will be down to fill the gap, which is also the 50% of that range. And then look at how convenient this is. The volume profile shows us that we have volume profiling here and volume profiling there, right? We call those volume spikes, volume bumps. You can see that lines up right with the gap fill, and it also lines up just a little bit below the beginning of the channel. Now we go back and we understand why that spike in channel is so important here, because we know that a deep correction back to the beginning of the channel should be relatively easy. What's the moral of the story? The moral of the story is, is stay patient for buyer failures at these highs. Why? Because we're in that area where, combined with that spike in channel, we may get nothing more than a small correction and then a run up to complete that channel rotation and to complete that measured move. So we definitely need to be patient if you're a seller. Patience comes in the form of one try, two tries, failure. That failure, we have targets waiting for us back to fill the gap which is a beautiful spot right around that 50% of the range. And then I got to tell you, the real juicy target is all the way down around this 1930 area. If you look closely, this is, this is the point of control for all you market profile traders right now. This is where the highest number of contracts have been traded today. As you can see here, we have our target at the beginning of the channel. Remember, when we look at a spike in channel, these deep corrections love to come back all the way to the beginning of that channel and then make the run. Now, it's very unlikely if we go all the way back to the beginning of that channel, all the way down to our spike and channel target down here, it's very unlikely at that point, seeing the big picture being in a range that we're still going to spike higher, we'll probably finish that move off and then rotate back higher. So keeping an eye out here for buyer failure off these highs to sell the highs and take profit at the targets listed below. If you look at it in risk reward, there's a lot more money to be made selling the highs right now than buying up near the highs. If we do break to these highs, we already know we've got great selling opportunities coming and we'll look at that in real time tomorrow. But keep an eye out for those buyers to try one more time here and fail. And that's going to be what we're going to be watching closely tomorrow morning to be looking to pull the trigger to the sell side. Don't forget, you can download this chart right below the video. You can also come out and join us tomorrow morning and we'll be trading that market in real time on a much faster time frame for more short-term opportunities. Now, let's keep moving here. Gold and Euro, almost pegged identically together right now, the gold and the euro look very, very similar. They're both rotating up off these lows. If you remember from last week, nothing's really changed. We rotated off the highs all the way down to those lows. And just like you would expect, we see a little bit of a blow off down there. Sellers try to sell those lows. They get trapped on the wrong side. And now we start pushing higher here as we rotate back up to those highs. Now look at this chart real quickly here, and as you can see, there's a lot more profit to be made being a buyer at these lows than trying to sell this sucker back down. I also can see we have this long-term bear channel. This long-term bear channel is one of those faux channels we always talk about. Remember, this market is just in a range. So these channels, although they do appear to be valuable, they're highly suspicious. And we love to use these, what we call faux channels or fake channels, right? They don't, they're not very important. They're not going to be able to hold more than a little bit of buy pressure. Okay, what happens is you see these rotations from the high down to the low, 
people draw these channels and you can use these channels as little trap areas here, right? Because again, you would think we're going to rotate back down and we may still do that. But again, the odds are significantly in our favor right now to be a buyer. Why? Well, gold is rotating higher up off the lows of the range from last week. As you can see, though, it's running into that faux resistance, right? That faux channel high up there around 11.25 or so. So we know that's likely where the reaction is coming from to keep this price from completing its measured move up to the ABCD. And we can also see a nice channel here that we'll now expect for rotation. What a beautiful opportunity here right now to be a buyer on gold. So as we run into that resistance, the best opportunity right now is seller failure. Wait for those sellers to fail because you know that's what's going on right now. The sellers who are blindly following that bear channel, those sellers, once they fail, that's going to be your cue now. right? They try once, they try twice. I'd love to see a higher low and then give me the chance here to buy it back up. I've got targets waiting for me at 26s, targets back at the 50%, at the 75%, and then back at the 100% of that trading range, as you can see clearly marked overhead. So range rotation tells me I'm a bull right now on gold. Channel rotation tells me this is a great time to be a bull right now on gold. The volume profile tells us, now look at this. This is quite interesting. If you mark up the volume profile, now I don't use volume for entries. I use volume as, it's a, it's a, it's a definite, it's a definite uh, kind of roadmap here for where we've been and where the interest has been. As you can see here, we go from the high down to the low. Look at all the volume piled up here, right in this area right here. Now, flat moving average, double tops, double bottoms. We can clearly see that this market is, is kind of hunkered down here in this lower, in this lower third. But look what's up at the, top, at the highs up top here. Another bit of volume, and that's why I'm interested in a target up top there at 11.38.7, 11.40 area. Again, think of this in terms of risk and reward. Buying this low, there's a hell of a lot more opportunity for profit than trying to sell at this low. Now, what would cause me to become a seller? Because you can see we do have what I call the faux channel here. This is that channel that's drawn during the rotation from high down to low. And that's again, what's causing those sellers, right, to push this price lower. If we do see price try once, try twice, and stay below the 1117, then we do know this, these sellers do mean business. And we'll be looking for an ABCD target and a rotation back down to those lows. But as of right now though, I've really got to see more than this to call this a bearish market. Members, you know what qualifies successful breakout of this trading range. If you don't know how to qualify a successful breakout of the trading range, come out and see me tomorrow morning. We'll be watching this market in real time together with all of our students here. So definitely a bull here right now on gold. And then last but not least here on the S&P. The S&P is pretty much the hardest market we're seeing right now. As you can see here, the S, I'm sorry, the, uh, the Euro, not the S&P, excuse me. The S&P also being a bullish market along with crude. Here we have the Euro. The Euro also bullish as the buyers rotate the price up off these range lows this evening. The range rotation says to keep looking for buying opportunities tomorrow. However, the channel rotation tells us to expect price to dip lower before it makes the next push higher. This is a classic example of using the channel what we call the price action cycle, to time your entries. We know what direction we want to go in. We're rotating off that low. We know we want to be a bull here right now, but we do have a concern about timing. And the reason why I say it, this is probably the most difficult market we have on our, on our uh, workspace here this afternoon is the fact that we have this just ugh, ugly channel coming off this low. You'll notice we're definitely getting all the boxes checked. It's ticking all the boxes, but boy, oh boy, is it ugly. You can also see an ABCD that we've drawn up here and a target back up near those highs, which just happens to coincide with the weekly volume area high. And of course, we're coming off of right the point of control. So looking at the volume analysis, we can see there's definite interest 
back up around this 1260 area or back down around this 1122 area. Now again, the channel rotation is, in my opinion, the biggest clue. We expect price to rotate from the low up to the high, back down to the low before it goes higher. As you can see, we haven't completed that rotation yet. That leads me to believe that there's probably going to be some bear traps waiting here. I'll expect to see price make a run for it, fill that rotation, and then make its next leg higher. This is a classic case. We know what direction we want to go in. Now we just have to wait for the proper timing of it. Now the benefit of timing, don't forget, is that by using proper timing, this allows us to get the most amount of profit out of it with the least amount of risk. It's equivalent to having a bazooka compared to a sniper rifle. I don't want to go in just and sledgehammer my way through because if I buy right now, I'm going to have to place a big stop loss. And personally, I don't like taking trades with a lot of risk, no matter what the percentage is of my account. I'd rather wait for that price to dip back a little bit lower, fake out these sellers because you know what's going to happen. If we make a run, you're going to get some sellers that are going to take the bait, set the hook, and then buy right into those stop losses understanding that rotation is still in play now if we do go higher here right if we do go higher here we're still going to look for that rotation before we get that best buying opportunity so stay patient and you know where your targets are i get the volume spike along with the 75 percent of the range and also the range highs those are going to be your targets as we rotate back towards the high of that channel Guys, as you can see, we get a great plan here for tomorrow. Don't forget, tomorrow's not your average Wednesday. With Monday being a holiday this week, we've pushed back all the major news to Thursday. So make sure you double-check your economic news calendar. And before I let you guys go, remember, the trade room opens up tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. Eastern Time. And I look forward to seeing you right along with me and the rest of the members here at School of Trade. We get a great free trial here at SchoolTrade.com. Check that out. You're going to learn more with me in one week than you will anywhere else on the interwebs. And while you're here, you can learn more about our three levels of membership. We have a place for everyone to begin or to advance their career. Whether you're a brand new trader, our beginner's course is perfect for you to lay a strong foundation. We also have an advanced course where you'll join the trade room and trade right along with us, especially perfect for those experienced traders that are still trying to put the pieces together remember guys being successful as a day trader is just like being successful in anything else it's not enough to know the terms and to know the definitions you can't just know the numbers you've got to know the combination of the numbers to crack open the lock guys my name is joseph james thanks for stopping by the office this afternoon thanks for listening into the newsletter we're back here for the fall hope you guys had a great weekend but, don't, but don't, don't delay, though. Don't wait to get back on this horse because we've got a big week in front of us. Wednesday session tomorrow into the best time of the year. Guys and gals, tomorrow morning, 8 a.m. Eastern time, I'll see you there. Don't forget, share with a friend. Give me some feedback. Be well out there. Be nice to each other. I'll see you next time. Adios, amigos. Bye-bye for now.